Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And the way we do that here in First Five is by spending some time together in the Word of God and in prayer. And so every morning we take a chapter of Scripture and we read it together, and then we take a portion of it and kind of dig into that particular lesson and learn a little bit more from it, more in depth. And so uh, we've been working our way through the book of Acts, and today we come to Acts chapter 19. And so my hope would be that when we're all done, you'll take a moment and read the whole of Acts chapter 19. But for the purpose of our lesson this morning, we're going to look at just a portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 17 through 20. So I would invite you to grab your Bible, or if you want, pull it up on your phone and you know Google it, or pull it up on your Bible app, whatever you have. And let's read together from Acts chapter 19, beginning in verse 17. We have a relatively short passage today. When this became known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachma. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. This chapter contains a great story about a silversmith named Demetrius and the temple of Artemis, which actually that temple of Artemis that you're going to see described in another portion of the chapter when you read the whole thing was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So it was a big deal. So often when we read chapter 19, we focus on that story because it is a very powerful story. It's a good story. So please do take the time to read the whole chapter because you're not going to want to miss that story. But I also think there was something important and often overlooked here earlier in this chapter. Paul has now come to Ephesus. This is where the, the temple of Artemis was, or Diana is the, the Greek and Roman name for the same god. Uh, this, the city of Ephesus was really one of the great cities of its time. Very influential, powerful city, an economic center, uh, lots of culture, what have you. And so he has come, Paul's come, he's beginning to preach, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, man, his preaching has just become more and more persuasive, and he's just having incredible fruit in this ministry, and people are coming in large numbers to Christ. And as they do, something interesting is beginning to happen. Many of these new believers are experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit of God in their lives, and it's beginning to transform them. It's beginning to change them. God is beginning to bring conviction onto their hearts in powerful ways, and as a result, many of these new believers are turning away in dramatic ways from their old lives and what they used to do, what they used to be a part of, and, and one of the most dramatic examples is here in this little section that we just read. Among those that Paul had reached with the good news of Christ, that had come to accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, was a group of men who had practiced sorcery. They were, we might use the word warlocks or, or witches or, or whatever. They used dark art, right? And so they had used these spells and things uh, but now, 
Now that they've turned to Christ, they are completely turning away from that life and want nothing to do with that. And the Holy Spirit has really convicted them of what they used to do. And so as a result, they all got together and decided, we are going to burn our scrolls. Their scrolls you might think of as like books of spells and, and that kind of thing, right? And so they're going to publicly burn them. They bring them into the city square and they, they light up a huge bonfire. And it says in the story that the value of these scrolls was 50,000 drachma. Now, a drachma at that time was roughly the equivalent of a day's wage, what was sometimes in different culture a denarius, right? And so uh, that is, let's bring it into modern day. Suppose you make $100 a day, right? Uh, that would be $5 million, right? Would be the value of those today, right? Just, just amazing, right? And so this was a, a huge, almost mind-blowing act of obedience to God. And they just didn't want them anymore. And what's interesting to me is that they could have sold them, right? No doubt they could have gotten some money for them, but they didn't want anyone else to have them either. And so for me, as I was reading this story, a couple of big takeaways kind of stuck out for me. The first is that when you come to Christ, what you value changes. Right? These scrolls were no doubt very precious to these men once upon a time. But since coming to Christ, they have no value at all. In fact, worse than that, they, they represent sin to them. And so they, they, they're less than valuable. They're, they're a hindrance. Right? And so they can't wait to be done with them. The other thing that I want us to notice is that the Holy Spirit does the convicting. Right? Now, when Paul was preaching to these men who had practiced sorcery, he could have seen what they were doing and immediately condemned them for their sin and insisted that they burn their scrolls and then come and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, be forgiven of that sin. But that's not what Paul does, apparently. Instead, he just preaches the good news. He shares with them how much God loves them. Then, as God gets a hold of their hearts, the Holy Spirit brings conviction. The Holy Spirit brings change into their lives. Listen, you and I are going to encounter lost people with all kinds of sin in their lives. And I just think from this story, we're being reminded that the best thing we can do is love them into the kingdom of God. And then let the Holy Spirit work on their hearts. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, this is a really great little story. It's just a small snippet in this chapter, but there's a really important takeaway from it. And I pray, Lord, that it would speak to our hearts and it would remind us, Lord, first of all, that what we value changes once we come to you. But also reminding us that when we're trying to share Christ with people who are caught up in all kinds of sin in their lives, that the best thing we can do is just love them to God and then let the Holy Spirit bring conviction. Let the Holy Spirit bring change in their lives. I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.